Dr. Guy, what about the precautionary principle in terms of electromagnetic fields? Do you think the actual safety limits are enough to protect public health? Well, I'm not an expert in this field myself, but the little that I've read of the literature uh, suggests to me that the, those limits are not good enough because they are seemingly based on a, a paradigm of uh, tissue heating. In other words, you would need a lot of these uh, non-ionizing radiations to damage uh, health. I think that paradigm is now um, out of date, and what is most likely to be nearer the truth is the paradigm of what they call uh, information physics, which is based on cells communicating with each other through chemical means and also electromagnetic means and those communications between the cells appear to be disturbed by low, low, low levels of um, electromagnetic fields and therefore the current limits are most likely to be too high. So do you think that promoting the use of mobile phones, for example, also in children, can be a good uh, attitude from a public health agency? Because in Italy, for example, we have some people of the public health agency telling that you can use mobile phone as long as you want, also for children. Well, I think as early as 2002, uh, when an expert committee in England advised uh, authorities uh, to discourage children from using mobile phones uh, if they were, say, 16 or lower. And that was then based on some emerging evidence to suggest that there could be a problem with head cancer, for example. Uh, now, eight years later, that evidence seems to have got stronger. Uh, it's still very uh, weak evidence yet, but then you would expect only weak evidence at this point in the history of this technology, because there are still very few people who have been exposed longer than 10 years. But in the epidemiology that has been done, you can see the beginnings of uh, uh, too many head cancers appearing in those people who've used phones longer than 10 years, and they seem to be concentrated on the side of the head where the phone is used. So the agency, my agency, the European Environment Agency, said that uh, in 2007 um, it would be a good use of the precautionary principle to advise people not to put the head, not to put the phone next to their brains, but to use texting or an earpiece, because moving the phone uh, an arm's length away reduces the radiations by about a hundred times. And we think that's a low-cost precautionary measure, which, if it turns out that there are no head cancers from mobile phones, that would have been the best thing to do, rather than waiting for human evidence, which would take another five or ten years to become certain before we take action. Then it will be too late for you know, a lot of children and a lot of people. Just a very quick uh, answer about the conflict of interest in the public health agencies and the role they have on the capacity of building safety limits in all terms of GMOs, EMF, Well, it's difficult to be to generalize, but if we just look at the case studies in our book, Late Lessons from Early Warnings, which looks backwards at the history of asbestos, PCBs, benzene, and 12 other things, you can see a history of what you call regulatory capture, whereby the regulatory agencies get too close to the powerful economic interests that are justifying continued exposure, and they lose their capacities to take precautionary measures early enough. And I think one can see similar um, uh, activities or similar examples in the current controversies over GMOs, EMF, and so on. Okay.